day's gonna be different. Hi. God, this isn't you. You don't do this, man. Maybe I do. We got another one. We 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 did it, people. We got we got another. We got one more to add to the list of good video game movies. I don't know how how it happens, and 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 and, and, and it, it maybe maybe it's just that we've come through enough enough of a time where we've just been been shoveled excrement into our face that now the movie studios have decided that they're they're going to stop and give us what we want nutrients actual good food i don't know what you think rj am i am i am i over oversimplifying an otherwise more complicated situation oh no 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 this was a miracle of a movie honestly a miracle uh, uh, I saw the trailers for this movie. I was like, uh, okay, like it, the concept's great, but kind of like in the early 2000s, they kind of did these cool concept comedies. They don't always go full in. And, you know, Ryan Reynolds, I love Ryan Reynolds, but it's like, could he pull this off? Like, that's what I was thinking the entire time. And then and I went in and watched it, and I had a grand old time, man. This was such a fun movie. That, and honestly, okay, so let's get this out of the way, uh, first of all. Um, Ryan Reynolds does play Ryan Reynolds in this movie. That's just, that's just, oh, I feel like that's just going to be him and his career now is that he's just going to play himself or uh, subsequently some version of Deadpool. Even has, I don't know if you've looked at Ryan Reynolds' like YouTube channel r- recently, mm-hmm. um, but he started doing like little sort of marketing shorts for uh, some of his other business ventures like Mint Mobile and things like that. And it's, it's typical. He, he is literally, uh, it's his brand. He's literally using himself as his his brand now. His acting, his mm-hmm. this way he his charismatic sense of being is his brand. And you know what? Much like I always say when I talk about The Rock, it works. Like I, I'm not hating on it at all. Yeah, that's the thing. Like with Ryan Reynolds, because like he has been that actor who kind of been trying to find his footing for so long, and then literally when Deadpool came out, it was just like, yeah, he just went full in, and then ever since then, it's like, yeah, he's just been consistent. Um, I think it's kind of, it's, I mean, it's fun when actors try to have that persona, like, kind of like you're bringing up Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne Johnson's like this big, really big guy, but he has like this heart of gold, you know, and basically everything he does, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, people still go see these movies. Mm-hmm. So it's like... I mean, you can't help it. Half the movies in theaters uh, in a given year are rock movies, so... Pretty much, yeah. So here we have uh, not just Ryan Reynolds. We have uh, Jody Comer, uh, Joe Keery, Little Rail Howard, uh, Little Rail Howery. I always say Little Rail Howard. I don't know why. <laughs> that's not his, that's not this man's name at all. But uh, as as like our uh, well, Jody Comer as our uh, our female lead, I really liked her in this movie. Mm-hmm. This is actually my first time seeing her in a movie. I think I may have heard her name in passing, but I'd never actually seen her um, act before. So. As a first movie for me to kind of be exposed to her, she did a really, she did a really good job. She's definitely not being uh, uh, typecasted because her her main, uh, her I guess more popularizing role is in uh, Killing Eve. I don't know if you ever oh, heard of that show. That sh- I was in, she was in that show. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I have heard of that show. I haven't seen all of it myself. I've seen the first a uh, few episodes of the first uh, season, and she kind of plays uh, sort of a manic uh, pixie. Uh, a killer woman uh, in the in the show, which is very different from here. Like here, she's just a, a regular woman, a, a little bit. Uh, uh, what is the what is the term when you're not looked at by society? She's like invisible. You know, she's she's practically an invisible woman. But much like most people, when they get behind a keyboard, she's a badass, or you know, thinks she's a badass. Um, it's kind of funny though that you say there's not that much different because based on that, I mean, she does kill people in this movie. Obviously, they're video game characters, but like she doesn't show that much remorse. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, the, the whole like concept of Free City very much. I mean, obviously, it's basically Fortnite, GTA fused into one. So it's like that's kind of like the attitude of the world. And I kind of love it in the movie where it's like, you know, Ryan Reynolds is just having a normal conversation. Literally, all this chaos is just happening behind them. Like, helicopters are falling from the sky, just explosions. People are getting shot just left and right. I, th- I think that's kind of funny, like, the way they just play it so tame. I think I thought I really like that. 
Yeah, it does. Uh, it it is a, and this is something you can do when you're you're kind of parroting action movies in in a sort of sense because that's pretty much what this movie is doing by putting it in the video game world you can parody uh stuff that usually happens in action movies that you know people survive and you're like how do, how the heck do they survive but you put it you put it away in your mind because you're watching an action movie here it's because it's a video game so it all it makes sense it's almost like the video game is uh almost in the background of it like it's still very much a part of it but it's it's kind of in the background and it, it and it makes itself into an actual movie by doing so you know what i mean it did make sense i feel like i ran strung a bunch of words together no i understand and actually that that was kind of the, the thought i had i was talking to my friends about this movie to go see it like if you really think about it ryan reynolds isn't really the main character if you really get down to it sure he has the most focus he's in the title but when you really see it it's like it's really the developers of the game that really have the spotlight jody comer and uh joe keery yeah yeah, and like, you know, it's their, like, it's, I mean, obviously, the guy is their creation, so they're fighting, you know, like crazy to make sure they can protect their creation. Mm-hmm. And, and even though, like, Ryan Reynolds is kind of, he's kind of like a, he's in funny enough, even though he's trying to be the main character, he is a side character in a sense, in the grander scheme of things, which is actually kind of funny when you think about it, because, you know, Ryan Reynolds is like, you know, the face of the movie, so, which isn't to take away from the two actors, though, because they, they honestly held themselves on their own, honestly. I don't know. I feel like, I don't know if I'd call Ryan Reynolds the side character in this movie, most because he does actually have like a, a really big character arc in this movie. <laughs> like the movie is about his character arcs and then the sort of the developers become sort of a secondary character arc that we see through him almost. I almost kind of feel like this movie is like a uh, action comedy version of her. Hmm. You know? I, I would- yeah, her. That's an interesting comparison. Um, my thought was um, the Truman Show. That's what. That's what I got out of <laughs> that it. too. No, yeah, I felt heavy Truman Show vibes. Yeah, with little seeds of the Lego Movie, just for good measure, because the I guy's character, that. guy's character, definitely reminded me of um, what was it? Um, Emmett. I think that's his name. Chris Pratt's character in that movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Emmett and Guy are like almost, almost the same. Even they even go to the same coffee shop, pretty much. <laughs> No, um, I I definitely feel that this this movie definitely wears its like its references on its sleeves, and honestly, I, I don't hate it for that. Like, it still felt it still felt mad unique. Uh, mm-hmm. Also, I'm gonna throw this in there too: a better version of Ready Player One. Oh yeah, oh, like yeah. without think, a doubt. I think this one. I think it does. This one does it better because Ready Player One definitely was sold on the IPs that mm-hmm. they had. You know, it's like every like five seconds you're gonna get a reference. You like get like the DeLorean from Back to the Future. You see like Tracer from Overwatch, Mm -hmm. or you know, see Iron Giant, um, which is cool. But like, it does distract a whole lot. Where it's like, it's kind of like, it's kind. I always think Ready Player One's like the overproduced version of like Who Framed Roger Rabbit, where it's like, yeah, Who Framed Roger Rabbit had like its characters, but the focus was still the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's and, very much uh, very pushed in your face. I think that's one of my biggest problems with Ready Player One was like it, everything was pushed in your face. It wasn't the fact that there were references, it's the fact that there was nothing else but references. Um, here, mm-hmm. it's very much more subtle until you get to the end. And then, it, then it's like, oh no, we're, we're ripping off the band-aid on that one. Here's all of the references you could want. And I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna say what the references are. I think they're like really cool to see um mm-hmm. them just come out of nowhere. Although I did get I did kind of get spoiled on it for myself. Uh one of them got spoiled for me. It has to do with a certain superhero. And uh. yeah. And I was a little bit I was I was I was still happy when I saw it in the movie. Like I was watching a movie, I saw it, I was like, oh that's cool. But I really wish I could have went in just a little bit cold. Like it wasn't ruined for me. Uh, it was just like dang. That would have been cool to just oh like God. come out of that, nowhere. No, I, for the, that was for me because I win this movie honestly kind of blind. Like I saw some of the trailers, but like you know, I still you know I was still sold on the idea. So when I saw that specific scene, I won't say it here, but oh my god, I was laughing so hard. Mm-hmm. It was such it was such a out there, but it made sense if you thought about it. And I just oh mm-hmm. my god, I really liked it. Um, but also to your point about you know being a better Reddit player one. 
this movie for the most part actually keeps it original in terms of like their parodies they don't outright like show certain characters minus that one cameo Mm -hmm. but like everything is like you know they built you know free city is its own game it's all clearly a parody but it's able to kind of like make fun by you know just being in something as well so i actually appreciate about the movie that they wanted to really you know go full in on you know its own universe Mm -hmm. all right um there's something to say about the uh the visual effects and the, the CG special effects or something I think really cool that you get to get away. Another thing you get to get away with, uh, because this is a video game based movie, a lot of the action scenes where, you know, uh, you see our, our main character get, you know, hit into a wall or, you know, tossed up like a million times in the air. Um, they do a cool thing where most of it's live action, but then they'll switch from, you know, you seeing it as a video game point of view. And it looks like, you know, an actual, uh, 3d render video game, right? Like the Sims or something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, so when you see these action scenes and, you know, sometimes it it looks a little bit, you know, how action scenes nowadays look where they're switching with CG or it's layered with CG. So it kind of looks, it looks fake or it looks like a video game cutscene. Well here, that kind of makes sense to me because it's, you know, it's a video game. It's a movie based in a video game. So that makes like it, it helps me excuse that. Whereas in other movies, I'm like, ah, that's a little shoddy, but here it's like, no, yeah. Be as shot as you want to, because you, you get, you get the video game pass, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I actually, I would agree with that too. Cause, um, it definitely does keep it consistent because if it was like, if they decided to just make it, they'll just shoot live action footage to show the video game world while they're like in the real world. Then it's like, yeah, we clearly know it's a movie, but the fact they actually took the time and actually, you know, created 3D models of Ryan mm-hmm. Reynolds going around doing these things, it's like, it's, it keeps it, you know, it keeps it um, all contained, you know? It's, it's like the director was like, yeah, we're just going to go all in on this. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, keep every single detail um, kind of consistent so the audience gets the idea, yeah, this isn't really a video game. Um, so I actually really appreciate the movie for doing that. Um, definitely makes it more... Um, it kind of keeps it like memorable in that weird way mm-hmm. where I was like, I remember, Oh yeah. I remember that scene where, you know, they're watching um guy run around and it actually looks like it's a video game. So, yeah. I really, I really like that. Um, somebody else we forgot to talk about that. I think, uh, I really like to kind of choose the scenery in this whole thing is Taika Waititi. Ah, uh, who, yes. uh, who I think it feels weird to see him as an actor and a, and a director now, because I knew him as a director before I knew him as a as an actor. Even though I've seen, I think a few films with him in it, one of those being Green Lantern, which I I, I don't even recognize him in that That's movie. Right. He looks so he different. That movie. <laughs> he looks so. Di- Have you seen the the video? It's on Ryan Reynolds' channel. If you haven't seen it, for you know you and those uh, who are listening, but there's a video where they're they're just it's marketing for a free guy. Uh, back in like the late woes of 2020 when they were still trying to put this thing out and it's pretty much sort of like a little interview between with Joe Cage, uh, JD, Jody Comer, Ryan Reynolds and Taika Waititi and it was like Taika Waititi and Ryan Reynolds are like man it's, it's really good to finally be able to work on a movie with you it's like yeah man you two have heard a lot about you know no know they work and Joe Cage and Jody Comer are like wait haven't you guys worked on a movie before it's like no, I don't know. I don't think we have. I think it's the first one. It's like, yeah, yeah. I think it's, wasn't it Green Lantern? Like Green, Green Lantern. No, no. I think you're thinking of a different movie. I think you're thinking of Green Hornet with Seth Rogen. <laughs> I mean, and none of us, neither of us were in there. It, it's just, they just played this whole bit and it's great. Uh, definitely check that out. I swear, that's why I love Ryan Reynolds' channel. Cause he just, he, oh man, he plays this stuff good. But anyway, Taika Waititi uh, in this movie, again, he just, choose this i don't know i don't know what it is about that man but he is also another one that's just like wild and crazy and every time i see him i like him i don't always like him as a director a lot of the times i think like one of the one of the only films if i can say if i, if I can if i can just throw my hands up i'm say it i ain't really like thor ragnarok that much you know what i mean i like it i like it i don't like it as much as everybody else does right and that ain't his fault. You know what I mean? That's just, it's just him being him. But I just, you know, I just don't want him to be thrown out every, I don't know. I don't know. I'm hating. I'm hating a little bit. Let me, let me, let me back up. I'm hating a little bit, RJ. I'm hating. All right. <laughs> stop me. Stop me when I'm hating, bro. Just go ahead. Stop me when I'm hating. Cause I'm hating. Actually, 
Actually, you're gonna find this pretty funny. I'm actually not the biggest fan of Thor Ragnarok either. Yeah. I'm actually one of the few defenders um, of the original Thor. Oh, pers- RJ. Personally. Sometimes, man, sometimes, RJ, I hate you so much, but oh, this is one of the times we are kindred spirits. Because I, too, <laughs> love the, the original Thor movie over like the what it's become, essentially, which is yeah, Guardians 3. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, oh, I wish that movie would come out soon. But um, no, it's just the thing with Thor Ragnarok. I'm not trying to stray too far away from our topic, but mm-hmm. Thor Ragnarok was, I mean, it was it was a good looking movie. I mean, I love the visuals oh, yeah. in it. Oh, yeah. But it suffers from that late Marvel bug where it's like, yeah, Guardians came out. And all of a sudden, whenever you're doing sci-fi, it's like, oh, we got to make it as extremely juvenile and... um crazy as possible which works for guardians but like it's such a dramatic tone from like going from like the first thor mm-hmm. to ragnarok and it's like and i and i realized in the first scene like he's with um Sorter, is that his name mm-hmm. uh, and like he's like swinging around in the like with the chains and whatnot and like they have like this long drawn out joke where he's just trying to come around it's like this is the same movie right did i did i watch a parody like an snl skit or something it's mm-hmm. like I don't know. I feel like with just all the other MCU movies, I like. I mean, like I said, for at least for the first Thor, I really like the Shakespearean angle. I mean, it was directed by Kevin Brown after all, so it's like the kind of big soap opery, you know, fantasy. That's what I see in Thor. I mean, I might be crazy, and I've already been yelled at my friends for some saying this, anyways. Mm-hmm. But you know, I really think that the performances in the first Thor are some of the best in the entire MCU. Personally, I mean, Tom Hiddleston is like probably his best performance as loki in the first one yeah now it just kind of feels like everybody else well yeah and you have sir anthony hopkins being sir anthony hawkins i mean oh i love that part that. when he just when he yells at loki or oh, yells at thor and he just goes ah! and he just <laughs> he just growls like he just growls <laughs> at a person <laughs> but no i just feel like it's just one of those movies that just obviously gets just it just goes underneath the rug just because you know the other better movies quote quote you know like mm-hmm. Ragnarok, which like i said not a bad movie but you know i wasn't the biggest fan but well i mean that's but but that, but but think about that is that thor is a good thor movie i think thor ragnarok is a good audience movie that's yeah. that's pretty much the difference there mm-hmm. um but no so taika here like him not being a uh, hands-on director here and just being full-on actor i love it he goes he goes full out and it's and it's great to see it's it's great to see um but no uh oh and little rail howry like little rail howry is like our our sidekick uh here in this movie well i, I like little rail howry as a as a sidekick in general uh, i'm kind of sad i feel like he he he's stuck in that role you know I feel like I don't really see Lil Rail Howard in a uh, in a main lead role. He had his own TV show for a while on, I think, Fox. But uh, you know how that shit go. Um, <laughs> so now I think he just he just uh, last movie I saw him in was like uh, the uh, that Kevin Hart joint where he's a single he's a single dad because his wife died or some shit. Um, and of course he played the sidekick best friend in that one too. So mm-hmm. like I like Lil Red Howard a lot. I really kind of just want him to get like a, a lead role somewhere. So the thing about him is that you know he's been getting work like a lot of work in the last couple of years. Obviously, Get Out was obviously his big like his first big role. So mm-hmm. obviously, and the and the hype surrounding that movie. So I'm glad that he's consistently getting work, even if one of them was Space Jam too. But you know I'm glad that he was. He is still getting work. Um, and I think, like, I, mean, I feel like his time is, like, I feel like he will get, like, a big starting role soon because he has a lot of traction behind him right now. Mm-hmm. And especially here, like, his timing, um, his comedic timing in this movie is actually spot on. Yeah. Yeah, like, definitely. Him going, back and, him going back and forth with Ryan Reynolds and just and just playing such an innocent character. Like, like, I don't think I've ever seen such a, like, such a passionate, just joyous performance from any actor in a very long time where it's like such a positive optimism um like just just to name a scene without trying to go too much in the spoilers where like you know um guys he's just feeling upset about some stuff and lily um and then um Lil ray howard's character is just literally just giving him such a just a nice um just passionate just um motivational speech i mean it may be a little cliche but it's like 
it's such a positive like message and it's such a good delivery on it. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm really sold by these characters in this movie, especially um the relationship of Ryan Reynolds and Larry Howard. Like they were such a good team together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I uh, hope they do more in the future. Honestly, the two of them, they make a good team. Yeah. Uh, I think, man, I, I really think that's uh that's Ryan Reynolds effect. Cause I feel like Ryan Reynolds is like, he, he is, he's kind of like the Denzel Washington to where you could pair him with anybody and it'll work. Like you could literally pair Ryan Reynolds with anyone and it'll, it, it'll just work. Cause dude is just mad charismatic. And he, I think he plays off of other people really well. He'll play. I mean, he'll play himself off of other people really well, but it's still like, it's still real good to see. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. the same way with like Denzel Washington, Denzel Washington, like he'll play himself, um, off of anybody, but it'll, it'll be good. You'll, you'll enjoy it. The interesting take, but I have to fact check just to make sure. But I, I'll, I'll take your word for it. I'm for saying, right I'm saying, watch any Denzel Washington movie, and it's usually white dude. In fact, in fact, RJ, Denzel Washington and Ryan Reynolds have a movie together. Did you know that's, this? That's right. Um, what is it? Um, Safe House. Safe, Safe House. That's mm-hmm. right. There you go. My, my, my words track. My words track. Don't even fact check me, bro. I am the fact check. <laughs> I am the facts. <laughs> All right, man. Oh, we also, what did you think? And I, I, I don't really know if I have any opinion on this. What do you think about bringing in the uh, young uh, streamers and whatnot uh, for their part in this? What do you, what do you think about that? So in any other movie, my soul would probably cringe out of its body. Mm-hmm. I think in this movie specifically, I feel like it works to its advantage um, just because it's, it makes sense in uh, cuz we're talking about video games and it's like you know you're parodying Fortnite which is the the biggest game right now mm-hmm. and you know a lot of Twitch streamers a lot of YouTube personalities they're all over that so it makes sense and it's like i feel like it's in a, in a weird way it actually helps the movie legitimize because- legitim- legitimize i'll try to dang i tried to come in with a word and just forgot how to say <laughs> the word completely uh, but i get you like it legitimizes the movie a little bit yeah, and so it's not, I would say, like, it's probably the only thing where it's, like, you know, when they, it's probably like one of the few times where they would bring kind of, like, modern culture and actually integrate it well mm-hmm. with the story. And it's, like, they're not, like, super distracting, too. Like, I mean, at least they're talking about the character. They don't just, like, talk about them. Well, some of them will talk about themselves. Yeah. But for the most part, you know, it's still focused on the story, you know. It doesn't, like, detect, it, like deteriorate from it. It doesn't, you know, take a take a pause to say, hey, by the way, we're doing this. We're doing streaming. It actually continues to flow them, and they're not in it for that long, mm-hmm. too. Like I would say, about like maybe ten minutes out of like a two-hour movie dedicated to it. Mm-hmm. And I've been having, and I was having so much fun by that point um, when the streamers do started coming in. So it's like I, at that point, I was like, sure, why not? Okay, totally fine with it. And some of them actually got a few laughs out of me too, which is something I was not expecting at all. So, I mean, I'm I'm totally fine with that personally. Yeah. It, it it honestly I don't know if it, and this is some of, some of it was it didn't bother me it it definitely didn't bother me it did it was surprising not surprising to see him but it was it did catch my attention when they did show up uh, in the flow of the movie um but I think one of the weird things that I noticed was like they are they're they're good at pretending to be streamers even though they are streamers they so they're good at, at being themselves but when it comes to delivering lines for the movie it kind of felt just a little bit stilted and that might have just been from some of them rather than others i'm not going to just you know list out who i thought man that person was shitty um but i i do i did notice like ah that line right there you that was your best take huh that was probably out of what like 20 takes and they're like nah just just give it just Give them, give them, give them the, just, just, just use it. Just you, or, you know, they uh, had them record themselves and it was like, just, uh, they sent us two different versions and both of them are trash. Just, just use that one. That's the best one we had. You know, that's kind of how I, how I feel about it myself. I mean, they're not actors. They're not, let's, let's, they're not. Let's, let's keep that in mind. You well, know, they're, but, I mean, so here's the, and here's the thing about that. Like, and I, I know this is me being again, hater. I'm put, I'm throwing out the hater flag. There it is. It's thrown out, bro. I'm throwing <laughs> it out. But, but when you, cause some of these people, they, their, their view count, 
their subscriber base is in the millions and you that means you you pretty much have to talk for a little like if you if you stream you have to talk literally for a living right you think they'd be able to deliver the lines a little bit more convincingly it, especially when it looked like you know from the shot and, and the way it's taken it's pretty much in their own streamer setup with their own camera it's like you just just say the line normally or just say the line convincingly you know like i don't, I don't know again that's haterism just take it as haterism it's fine you ain't got to take my words that you don't have to take as fact i'm just saying just stood out to me i'm saying i'm a hater anyway it's i feel like it's not the worst i mean okay you're not gonna get an oscar calibrated performance from a twitch streamer i'm not saying it's not possible but I mean, your headliner is Ryan Reynolds. And unless you got someone who can even come close, I mean, at least in this cast, like someone who's like up there, you're not going to get, you know, the greatest performance out of Twitch streamers. I mean, you might. If that, you no, really that shouldn't them. matter. None of those, none of that should matter. It doesn't matter who you're up against. Or you're not up against anybody. It's not about who's the main lead in here. Who Who is the star in the movie has nothing to do with your part, small or otherwise, in the movie. It's not the size of the part, it's how it's performed. That's fair. All, all I'm saying is, is that I don't think it was that bad. I mean, some honestly, right. I've seen some I've seen some Twitch streams. I mean, honestly, it's almost line for line, honestly. Like, at least the inflections, it feels like it's... I'd, I'd argue that their lines were probably improvised with obviously some notes from the studio, but like... I would say the way they um, delivered it, I feel like it was probably improvised by them specifically. Well, that's worse than write it down for them. Just write them. Then if it if that's the case, then you getting ri- you getting scripts. You're sticking to the scripts. That's how it is. Like you you can't predict a streamer. I think they're they those are probably like the like modern day improv class. Like they they I mean some of them probably do write some stuff down, but most of them you know, they kind of go on a whim. No, I, and that's fair, you know, for their stream. But when you're in a movie and you, the, everything is controlled, I'll tell you, like uh, Cos told told us one time, um, is that they have you, you have to spend so much money on a reel of film, right? You can got well guarantee that that scene, that frame, that there is a purpose for that scene and frame. It's not just going to be like they set up the camera and just did a thing. It's not because it costs time. It costs money. So having these people in there, having them in their shot, you know, having, and you could tell by the, if it was just going to be that, they just have somebody OBS capture their overlays and stuff like that. So, you know, they, they had somebody actually go through and graphic out, you know, what you would usually see versus what they want you to see because of stuff that they can show. So, you know, it had to take time in order to do all that stuff. So, you know, that whatever they have there, they're not going to just let them, you know, steamroll through it. You know, they're going to, in fact, at that on that alone, probably not improvised just because they might say some off the cuff that you don't want them to say that'll you know piss off the censures or whatever i don't know i don't know that that was just my thought or we can move on um you got anything else man. um yeah i mean i'm just saying like yeah it didn't really bother me no not me. not about that fool i say we're moving on from that anything All else right. about the movie about the movie oh um you know, I did find something really interesting. Like, so for the most part, this movie is a very, you know, very light, very, you know, fun adventure action movie. Mm-hmm. But they delved on something I didn't actually expect for them to talk about. And um, probably kudos, and kudos for them doing it. They actually talk about, you know, just um, issues with certain game companies, um, like in terms of like the, the treatment of their employees. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not trying to go too deep into it right now, but there's been a controversy with um, Activision and recently about their treatment of their employees. And I just find it really interesting. I mean, sure, it's still in a comedy, but the fact that they were able to kind of like really like talk about it for a second is like, yeah, we kind of like companies do screw over their employees. Um, out of their ideas, out of their, um, out of their ideas, out of their, you know, just their well being. So it's just kind of like, geez. <laughs> Was it don't be a menace that would have to do whatever they did, like a, like a uh, a big poignant moment or something like that come out and say message <laughs> <laughs> am i right about this? Is that don't be a menace um i think well, so. I don't drinking know. your juice in G- anyway uh but that's just kind of what i want to do when they did that in this way just come message <laughs> 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 no i feel you that that's really that's really good like this movie can just be like 
that good on like different levels. I love that about this. Um, all right, I'm gonna get in my final thoughts here uh, and say, man, from from script, you know, the stuff other than the streamers. I, I, I think uh, from script to to cinematography to concept to acting to direction. Honestly, I think this thing fires off on all cylinders. When I watched it, I, I I was I had a good time. I literally from from start to finish had a good time. I I enjoyed the story. Um, Sean Levy. I don't recognize the name. I don't know uh, if anything else I've seen you from. So I'm gonna pretend like this is your first film. And I think, man, you fired off the gate with a good one. <laughs> I know it's like, hey, his first move, but. Um, but I really, I really do think you've, you've got something good here. And the thing is, I really thought this wasn't going to be anything. When I first saw, when I first saw the trailers, I really thought, oh, this is going to just be, this is going to be like pixels all over again. This is going to be um, pixels, but with Ryan Riddles instead. And honestly, the Ryan Riddles part is probably the only part I'm going to enjoy about this. So I had low expectations going into this thinking that it was going to be whatever. And instead had a really, really good time. In fact, I would definitely probably rewatch this movie every now and again, just because it's that much fun. Um, your references aren't too deep. Your references aren't too, uh, too in your face. I won't say not too deep, but not too in your face. And in fact, enjoyable. So, I mean, I'm gonna have to give this movie an A, you know, uh, I have my problems. So that's the only thing keeping it from being an A plus, but I think honestly, this is an A movie. And I think it really should be seen. What about you, RJ? Um, yeah, just like you, this was, um, this is such a huge surprise of how much I enjoyed this movie. It was, I went in this movie thinking I probably get a few laughs, but then the rest would be kind of like, yeah, it's kind of just going by the numbers. But you no, know, with the just a great script, um, just great performances, and just an overall sense of fun. I mean, this was, this was a winner. This was, um, you yeah, know, this. I mean, if we're giving grades, I I can probably give this an A too. Mm -hmm. I think I think the only thing that really really holds it back from A plus for me, mm -hmm. I guess maybe 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 just a hint more like time in the game hmm. i feel like there was there, there was a there was a lot of focus on like the developer side thing which isn't a bad thing but i just had such a fun time in the world of free city that i kind of wish you know just just a inch like a little bit more time in the game but it but the, all in all though i mean for what they did it was still great so it's an eight for me okay well you know we thought people was time to see what you the people thought with a budget of 100 to 125 million, this hit with a box office of 182.6 million dollars, which not great, but not bad either. It at least made its budget back and then some. I know usually studios are looking to make like buku, but it's like, hey, like mm, we spent 100 million on this. I'm looking for a good uh 400 million. Can I get a 400 million? Then, then, then we'll talk about sequels and whatnot. Uh, but with Ryan Reynolds star power and, uh, Taika Waititi's star power on this, you know, he, if he come, if he decides to come back as an evil, as the returning evil villain, um, I can see this going, you know, going somewhere else. But I feel like this is something that, uh, Fox isn't just gonna, or excuse me, 20th century studios isn't just gonna let lie down, you know? Um, going over to the tomatoes with a tomato score of 81 and an audience score of 95. I feel like people feel the same way we do RJ. I feel like people feel like this is a great movie. Like they've had a lot of fun. Um, even on the critic side, even, you know how critics can be, man, we are some of the soulless, uh, just, 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 just joyless, uh, purveyors of film that there ever are and an 81 that's pretty high you know coming from coming from our ilk that's pretty high you know so i think this proves it man this is this is a winner of a film like everybody's enjoying this uh yeah i don't know what do you think um yeah especially since it's a video game movie mm -hmm. <laughs> i feel like an 81 is pretty much a a hundred percent yeah it's just a long history of video game movies just not pleasing anybody and sometimes might lean one side or the other but like most of the time it's like yeah someone does not like it so it's nice to see a video game movie that actually got everyone like hey this is really good yeah yeah the video game movie that brings other people together man like 
And and I don't know what it is about these last few years. And you know, one thing we didn't mention about this, I think, uh, when I call this a video game movie, because it is one that kind of parodies a lot of video game movies, but it's kind of a video game movie in the same way that I feel like Scott Pilgrim is a both a video game movie and a comic book movie, you know? Like, yeah, I can't say that. You know what I mean? Like, and and so I, I, I count this. I, I definitely count this because it's a win, uh, and video game movies need that. But this and Werewolves Within, surprise hit comic book movies. I mean, dang, video game movies uh, coming out of nowhere. Have you seen Werewolves Within? I have not seen that yet. I actually, know it's based on a video game, so mm-hmm. I definitely need to check that out. Based on a Ubisoft game. And and the other movie that they do, I always have to say this now, the other dude, the other movie, I think it's Josh Rubin, uh, is the director of that. And he made this other movie called Scare Me, if you haven't seen that either. I definitely, I'd say double feature those if you haven't. Okay. I think they're both we'll on do. Shutter. I know Scare Me is at least on Shutter. Okay, I'll t- I'll try to check it out. But yeah. Anyway, that's it for us, people. Hope you enjoyed. Leave your thoughts down in the comments below, and we will hear from you later. Guy, this world—it's a video game, and it's full of bad guys. I'm a rule breaker. I'm a rattle chicka 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 snaker. Thank you for listening to another Movie Club podcast, Production 1200's premiere podcast. If you have suggestions for movies you want us to see, leave them in the comments below. Check out the short films we have on the page and look forward to what we're making next. If you want more from us or other ways to reach us, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all Production 1200. If you're listening to us on iTunes, please give us a five-star rate and review. Trust me, it's what your grandma would have wanted. And if you listen to us on other podcast platforms, do the same if you're able to do those things. It's Trady Price signing off. See you next time.